More so than just about any department, costumes are responsible for planting the audience firmly in the world of whatever movie they're watching. But what happens when things go wrong? While costume designers work tirelessly to make sure that the clothes that movie characters wear reflect everything about them during that particular moment in time, there's no denying that they have a huge job. So just like any of us, sometimes they make mistakes. And sometimes those mistakes make it all the way to the big screen. Today, we're taking a look at some of the biggest wardrobe malfunctions that made it into the final cut. One of our absolute favorite costume blunders of all time just so happens to come from one of the best movie franchises also of all time, Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Set all the way back in 1936, Raiders of the Lost Ark sees American archaeologist Indiana Jones traveling from Nepal to Egypt in search of the Ark of Covenant. As you can imagine, both of these locations required all of the background actors to be outfitted in clothing specific to those particular regions, and yet in one scene, a man in some very contemporary blue jeans and a white t-shirt just strolls through the background and is totally obvious amidst a group of other men outfitted in white robes. While set in the 1930s, the movie was actually made in 1981, so there's no way he was supposed to be just another American tourist either. We've never received a real answer about who this man is or how he ended up on camera, but we would absolutely love to know just how he made it past everyone watching from behind the camera and everyone working in the editing room during the post-production process all the way to the big screen. Some costume mistakes are clearly just accidents that slip through the cracks during the crazy hustle and bustle of making a movie, but sometimes these flubs are actually built into the costumes from the earliest stages of the costume design process. Take the costumes from the 1984 film Amadeus. While anyone who has seen the movie would agree that the costumes in the film are absolutely amazing, so much so that the costume designer took home an Academy Award for them, there's one little thing that stuck out for history buffs everywhere, and that is zippers. The film is set in the second half of the 18th century, and back then, all of the clothing worn by the wealthy members of society were absolutely covered in tons of tiny buttons. While we assume that the costume department just didn't have the time to be buttoning and unbuttoning hundreds of people over and over again, because you can clearly see that they tried to hide zippers in a ton of costumes. This isn't so bad, except for the fact that zippers weren't even invented until 1913. Set in early 1858, during the time of American slavery and also what we would consider the Old West, Django Unchained tells the story of a German bounty hunter named Schultz and a recently freed man named Django, who team up in order to track down bounties and ultimately take down the nightmarish Candyland Plantation and its owner, Calvin. The movie is a homage to the classic spaghetti western movies from the 1960s and is definitely more concerned with style than historical accuracy, which is made clear when we see Django go rocking a pair of round sunglasses throughout the movie. While the sunglasses might look awesome, they were not invented until 1929, but since the movie is a larger-than-life western rather than a historical drama, we're guessing that Quentin wasn't too bothered by that little fact. Recently, while staying at home, some fans have started watching or re-watching the infamous teen drama Gossip Girl. In a scene at a restaurant between Serena and Dan, Serena is seen wearing a tight coral colored dress, but in one quick shot, when she stands up to leave, you can clearly see a pair of black sweatpants under her dress. The simplest explanation for this is that it was a cold day and Blake Lively was wearing a pair of sweats in order to keep warm, which worked perfectly fine while her legs were concealed under the table. But how did they not notice them when she stood up to walk out of the restaurant? Either way, we're kind of glad they didn't, as this is now our favorite fashion moment in all of Gossip Girl. Movies made in the 1980s that are set in other time periods really seem to have a hard time getting away with the 1980s aesthetic. Think of the vision of what 2015 looked like to the people who made Back to the Future 2. It looks, well, exactly like the 80s, only more future-y. We suppose this can be said for any time period, but there's something about the 80s that seems particularly hard to shake. Take this example from Dirty Dancing, one of the best summer romance movies of all time. Dirty Dancing was made in 1987, but was set at a wealthy resort in the Catskills in 1963. While some of the costumes in the movie make perfect sense for the time, some just really don't. 
take this montage where Baby is learning the big dance. At one point, we see her wearing rolled up jean shorts and a thick leather belt. Jean shorts in that style didn't become popular until the late 80s, and there's no way Baby would have been wearing them back in 1963. The ancient Romans were responsible for so many incredible inventions that we still use today, from Roman numerals to modern plumbing, newspapers, air conditioning, the aqueducts, and Lycra bike shorts? If we were to take the movie Gladiator for historically accurate, that's what they would have us believe. The thing is, they definitely didn't have bike shorts back in ancient Rome. And yet, we get why in many of the battle scenes in Gladiator, Russell Crowe's black shorts can be seen under his costume. Those fights are pretty physical, and there's no doubt that the costume department and Crow decided that he needed a protective layer in order to avoid some pretty graphic nudity. We do have to wonder why black? There might have been a way to protect Crow and all of our eyeballs without making it quite so obvious. Seeing as how Gladiator won the Oscar for Best Costume Design, clearly the issue wasn't all that big of a deal to moviegoers at the time. When the movie Glory came out in 1989, it was met with almost unanimous praise from both audiences and critics all over the place. The story, about a regiment of black troops who sign up to fight in the American Civil War, was brought to life by the period-accurate costumes that were crafted down to the tiniest details in the shoes. Which is why it's kind of hilariously ironic that in one scene, as a child reaches his hand up to wave to a group of troops as they pass, we can clearly see a silver digital watch around his wrist. The moment doesn't last long, but it's so obvious that we have to wonder how it was possible that they missed his watch when they put that child actor into his costume in the first place. We totally sympathize with the enormous task of having to outfit tons and tons of background actors for those big crowd scenes, but the fact that it's a digital watch on the exact arm of the actor who sticks his hand right up into the middle of the frame is priceless. Captain America The First Avenger is undoubtedly one of the best movies in the Marvel canon, along with making Chris Evans a superstar and helping to fill out the entire MCU Avengers series, it was really just such a fun movie to watch. While Marvel movies have the freedom to play around with history a little bit, a big chunk of this movie does take place during a very real and very well-documented historical event, World War II, which is why we were so surprised to see a piece of technology worn by the character Jim Morita that was definitely not around at the time. In the train raid scene, we see Jim wearing a very high-tech earpiece known as a Bowman Communication Military Headset, which doesn't make a lot of sense for World War II. Listen, when audiences flocked to the theaters to see Troy in 2004, they weren't exactly going in for a perfectly historical retelling of the Battle of Troy. They were going for the stars, the action, and one now infamous moment featuring a sleeping Brad Pitt. The retelling of Homer's The Iliad was packed with the biggest names in Hollywood at the time, and while the costumes were lush and intricate, they feature one particular moment that belongs in a totally different time, a pink umbrella. While it might have helped keep Orlando Bloom out of the sun, his pink parasol definitely wouldn't have been invented for a long, long time after the movie was set. For a while, it seemed as though Hollywood just couldn't get enough of semi-historical dramas about men with lots of shiny abs fighting one another with swords. There were the successes like Gladiator and 300, and then there were the less successful like 2014's Pompeii. While the mystery of the real Pompeii is a fascinating historical relic, and we understand the idea behind putting it on screen, the movie didn't really do as well as anyone involved might have hoped, and it's a bit of a grim premise, seeing as how we all know how it ends. Either way, the movie takes quite a few liberties with the history of it all, one of which is the fact that Kiefer Sutherland's character is seen in a purple cape. This doesn't really make much sense as, at the time, Emperor Nero had declared purple to be his color, and anyone else who dared to wear it would be punished with the death. We can't really blame the costume department for these little mix-ups. And hey, at least it isn't a Starbucks coffee cup, huh? Right, Game of Thrones? We'll take some Lycra shorts and a zipper over that any day of the week. So what do you think of this list? Do you not mind a costume blunder here and there? Or does it take you out of the movie entirely? Did we miss any costume mistakes that we've just got to know about? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to hit subscribe to keep up to date with the latest videos from Screen Rant.